In the past, we've encountered limits like the limit as x goes to 2 of x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. We can't evaluate this limit just by plugging in 2 for x because x minus 2 goes to 0 and x squared minus 4 goes to 0 as x goes to 2. This is known as a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. It's called indeterminate because we can't tell what the limit's going to be just by the fact that the numerator goes to 0 and the denominator goes to 0. It depends on how fast the numerator and the denominator are going to 0 compared to each other. And the final limit of the quotient could be any number at all, or it could be infinity, or it could not even exist. In the past, we've been able to evaluate some limits in 0 over 0 indeterminate form by using algebraic tricks to rewrite the quotients. In this video, we'll introduce L'Hopital's rule, which is a very powerful technique for evaluating limits in indeterminate forms. A limit of the form the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x is called a 0 over 0 indeterminate form if the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to 0 and the limit as x goes to a of g of x is equal to 0. A limit in this form is called an infinity over infinity indeterminate form if the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to infinity or minus infinity and the limit as x goes to a of g of x is equal to infinity or minus infinity. We saw an example of a 0 over 0 indeterminate form in the introductory slide. One example of an infinity over infinity indeterminate form is the limit as x goes to infinity of 3x squared minus 2x plus 7 divided by negative 2x squared plus 16. Notice that as x goes to infinity, the numerator goes to infinity while the denominator goes to negative infinity. In these definitions of indeterminate form, it's possible for a to be in negative infinity or infinity like it is in this example, but it doesn't have to be. L'Hopital's rule can be applied when f and g are differentiable functions and the derivative of g is non-zero in some open interval around a, except possibly at a. Under these conditions, if the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x is a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity indeterminate form, then the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x is the same thing as the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x over g prime of x, provided that this second limit exists, or is plus or minus infinity. Let's look at L'Hopital's rule in action. In this example, as x goes to infinity, the numerator x goes to infinity, and the denominator 3 to the x also goes to infinity. So we have an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. So let's try applying L'Hopital's rule. Our original limit should equal the limit as x goes to infinity of the derivative of the numerator, which is 1, divided by the derivative of the denominator, which is ln of 3 times 3 to the x, provided that this second limit exists or is infinity or negative infinity. In the second limit, the numerator is just fixed at 1, and the denominator goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. Therefore, the second limit is just 0, and so the original limit evaluates to 0 as well. In this example, we have a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, because as x goes to 0, sine of x and x both go to 0 in the numerator, and sine of x cubed goes to 0 in the denominator. So using L'Hopital's rule, I'll try to evaluate instead the limit I get by taking the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of sine x minus x is cosine of x minus 1, and the derivative of sine x cubed is 3 times sine x squared times cosine x, using the chain rule. Now let me try to evaluate the limit again. As x goes to 0, cosine of x goes to 1, so the numerator here goes to 0. 
as x goes to zero, sine of x goes to zero, and cosine of x goes to one, so the denominator also goes to zero. So I still have a zero over zero indeterminate form. And I might as well try applying L'Hopital's rule again. But before I do, I want to point out that cosine of x is going to one. So the cosine of x here really isn't affecting my limit. And in fact, I could rewrite my limit of a product as a product of limits, where the second limit is just one and can be ignored from here on out. Now I'll apply L'Hopital's rule on this first limit, which is a little bit easier to take the derivatives in. So the derivative of the top is minus sine x, and the derivative of the bottom is six times sine x times cosine x. Now let's try to evaluate again. As x goes to zero, our numerator is going to zero, and our denominator is also going to zero. But hang on, we don't have to apply L'Hopital's rule again because we can actually just simplify our expression. The sine x on the top cancels with the sine x on the bottom, and we can just rewrite our limit as the limit of negative one over six cosine of x, which evaluates easily to negative one six. In this example, I want to emphasize that it's a good idea to simplify after each application of L'Hopital's rule. If you don't simplify, like we did here, then you might be tempted to apply L'Hopital's rule an additional time when you don't need to, which might make the problem more complicated instead of simpler to solve. In this video, we were able to evaluate zero over zero and infinity over infinity in determinate forms by replacing the limit of f of x over g of x with the limit of f prime of x over g prime of x, provided that second limit exists. This trick is known as L'Hopital's rule.